I recall attending a birthday celebration at my cousin's house several months ago. My cousin's family also had four children, all of whom are now adults, and they're all many years older than I am. We periodically received invitations to their birthday celebrations, though I can't even recall whose birthday it was at this specific time. This occurred at the start of the new century, and since they had a console, which was quite popular at the time, I always enjoy going to their place. Very early. In my opinion, we were probably just hanging around before having some burgers and dessert. I don't really recall many of these particulars. However, I later walked outside. They also grew hens on their sizable property, which included a vast field and woodlands. Near the entrance to the forest, there was a tiny shack with a chicken coop inside where the hens resided. I am aware that periodically they had issues with coyotes attempting to steal the hens. My cousin and I took a stroll outdoors so he could show me how the hens were doing. He must have been called away at some point since it was just me and the hens when I made the decision to go out and visit the chickens alone. I strolled out to the entrance of the forest and into the tiny barn. I entered and inspected all of the birds there. They were fairly numerous. As I got closer, some of them turned to face me. Then I heard someone outside the barn, whom I immediately recognized as being my cousin. However, after a time he didn't enter the barn, so I yelled his name. I hailed him again before getting a response, and after that, I began to question whether it was even he who was outside. I started to become a bit worried that there may be a big animal like a wolf, bear, or anything similar outside the barn. And I made a leisurely exit to investigate. I was unable to see anything when I did. But then, further into the forest, I began to hear sounds of activity. It sounded as though it was somebody or something rather enormous. It has to be a deer, I reasoned. I fled back home, though, because I was a young child and afraid. After spending some time with the others, I wandered back out into the trees to have another look at the hens, but about an hour later, curiosity won out, and I left again. This time, I walked directly to the poultry barn and unlocked the entrance. But as quickly as I opened it, I noticed a person inside that I wasn't familiar with. I slammed the door behind me and sprinted back to my cousin's house. I informed one of my cousins that there was a person in the barn as soon as I entered. We both walked back outside, but whoever was in the barn had left by the time we returned since he didn't appear to trust me. No one else was informed of our return once we had done so. But even after all these years, I still remember what I saw there, and I believe the man was the one I had earlier heard in the nearby woods. When I was a college student a few years ago, John Tom, and I shared a residence throughout the academic year. We attended a sizable university. Additionally, the three of us had a respectable number of friends. Because John's birthday fell on a weekend, we hosted a celebration for him at our home. Basically, all of our buddies showed up, and we just chilled around, played some games, and drank. More and more guests arrived as time passed, and soon our home was crowded. In fact, I didn't even recognize some of the visitors. However, I assumed that at least one of the men knew them. It was quite enjoyable. But ultimately, the time was indeed late. And around two in the morning, people began to go. Some of our buddies lingered long after the majority of those I did not even know well left. But there was still this one man there, who I didn't even recognize. I questioned John about the identity of the man when there were only about ten of us remaining. John shrugged and replied, no. A few moments later, the man I recognized departed, and a few more of my pals went as well, leaving only a small group of us there. However, a couple of minutes later, our front door was knocked on. The man who had attended our party earlier was there when I stepped up and unlocked it. He inquired as to whether my automobile was in the alleyway behind our home. I replied that we did have a tiny driveway and garage next to a tiny back alleyway. My housemates would park on the street since my car was the only one that could fit in the alley. The man informed me that it appeared as though someone was attempting to gain entry into my car. As he was fleeing, he claimed to have seen this. 
I accompanied a man outside. We moved rapidly to get to my car after that. But when we arrived, I was the only person there. We assume that whoever was there has now departed. The man took me around to the passenger side of the car and claimed to have seen the man there. I looked toward the door. And while I was doing so, I abruptly noticed a car's headlights burst into the alley. I could not really help but look away since everything happened so quickly. The moment I did, I sensed a push from behind, and I immediately tumbled into the alleyway center. I could see the headlights from where I was on the floor as they raced right at me. My momentum was carrying me to the opposite side of the lane, so I moved my body there as swiftly as I could. Before the fast automobile ran me over, I just barely managed to cross the road. I was literally three or four feet away from being struck by it. When I turned around, I spotted the person who had taken me out there. He was staring at me directly and had a shocked expression on his face. I came to the conclusion that he was the one who shoved me. I too heard the automobile stop abruptly at the same moment. I quickly sprang up and leaped the fence separating the backyards of the neighbors who lived behind us from the alley. I immediately took off running, hiding in one of my neighbor's shrubs. For a while, I could hear the sound of tires screaming as if a car were speeding along a neighboring road. I informed my housemates over the phone of what had occurred. After that, John emerged from the building, located me, and we both returned to our home. The cops were then summoned. I'm not even sure who the man was or how we found out about our celebration. However, I am aware that I almost got run over that evening. I consider myself fortunate to be here today. This simply occurred a few years ago. I'd really like to spend time with my wonderful college friends. There are approximately 10 of us, so we frequently hang out. We take a couple of classes at our institution together. I and a few other individuals were invited to my buddy, Danny's birthday party at his place. There was no home party or anything of the kind. But for Danny's birthday, it was more of an intimate gathering. We first spent time at his residence. After that, we headed out to eat. Following that, we returned to Danny's house, where we all gave him a present or two. Danny intended for him to unwrap them and perhaps play a few games. Danny shared a home with three other members of our circle of friends. Additionally, it was an older-looking two-story home. We heard sounds of someone moving about upstairs as we were sitting out in the sitting room at Danny's place. Until we realized that one of our pals, Jim, was not really with us, we all exchanged kind of creepy looks with one another. Upon realizing that was indeed him, Danny was about to unwrap his presents, so we paused for a few minutes before yelling at Jim to return downstairs. But he did not descend. Finally, I offered to go up and collect Jim, who I assume was unable to hear us. Prior to ascending, I used the restroom. The door was open, but Jim wasn't inside. Jim didn't reside there, so it made me think it was really odd. And I had no idea why he would be in the bedroom of a man whose bedroom doors had been left open after buying someone a gift. I then carefully entered and had a look around. There were no lights on at all. Then I heard my name being spoken. Jim appeared. I turned to face the source of the noise. When I went to the closet where it was coming from, I saw Jim hiding inside. He gestured me over and informed me that someone else, who didn't reside there, was upstairs. He claimed to have gone upstairs to the restroom, and as he turned to head downstairs, he observed a man enter Danny's bedroom. I instructed him to return downstairs. Nevertheless, just as I was stating that we heard someone moving down the corridor, we had not heard anyone ascend the stairs, so we were sure it was not another one of our buddies. Jim returned to the closet as I sprinted to the bed. We both managed to be as silent as possible. Strangely, someone walked into the room we were in after entering the corridor and stopping just inside the doorway, since I did not hear any footsteps. And then, in that instant, I believe my heart would burst from my chest. It was silent for about ten seconds until I heard someone coming up the stairway. The person in the room next to us then appeared to turn around, depart, and re-enter the corridor. Suddenly, I heard one of my buddies yelling. 
When we stepped outside and fled, Jim and I both realized we had to assist. We briefly saw a person dash inside Danny's room before they quickly closed the door. We could see Danny at the top of the stairs when he would come upstairs. He shouted that he was contacting the police, and we saw him holding his phone. Following his call to them, within five minutes they were at the house. While we all waited downstairs, the cops went inside Danny's bedroom. When they emerged, the window was completely open and the guy had Van Barn. None knew the person's story, but I imagine the man climbed up the tree adjacent to Danny's bedroom window to get inside. Since Danny's window was already cracked open, all the man had to do was raise. We then continued the birthday celebration as best we could after that. We 